All right, really big news today as James Gunn officially announced the slate of DCEU projects that we've got to look forward to for the next 10 years with the direction that he sees for the DC Universe, what he sees going forward. Uh, He's laid it out for us, or at least the beginning of it. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that right now. Uh, This coming to us from Heroic Hollywood. Now, I'm going to let James Gunn kind of set this up for us in his announcement. Obviously, I can't play the whole thing because of rules that are out there that make it no fun to produce content on the Internet. But we can watch it for a few seconds. So let's give it a listen. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of you know our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And- so I wanted to get that out there because that's really important, I think, is they really are trying to create one comic universe that's on screen that's on all of our screens it's on the theaters uh, the movies movie screens uh, our home televisions even our video games everything is interconnected that that tissue is there linking everything together he does go on to say uh when, when it comes to projects like matt reeves the batman and uh todd phillips joker movies and anything else that comes out that's gonna be like that going forward they're gonna be clearly labeled as dc elseworlds so there's going to be the DC universe, which will have probably, I imagine, its own intro, you know, intro to its movies and shows. And then you'll have anything outside of that. It's going to have an Elseworlds, a very separate thing, so that the audience will clearly know that you are seeing something that's part of their big mythos um, or something that's not. So the first chapter for the first 10 years that they've, they've named Gods and Monsters uh, consists of these projects. So it's going to sh- start off with... Uh, Creature Commandos, which is going to be an animated show on HBO Max. Uh, James Gunn said he's written every episode for it, and it's basically monsters in the army. It looks kind of interesting. And then we have Waller, which is going to be a live-action series that's going to spin out of the Peacemaker series, still starring Viola Davis. And this is where things kind of get confusing for me, because, uh, you know, Viola Davis was Waller in the old Suicide Squad movie and in the old DC uh, Snyderverse, and now she's coming here into the James gunn overse or whatever it's going to end up being called. Uh, and, and some other things, I mean, imagining the original, his soft reboot of Suicide Squad, as well as Peacemaker, are probably also part of the James gunn verse And um, other things aren't. Because he did say in the video that flat, the Flashpoint movie is coming and it's going to hard reset the DC universe. It'll be the end of the Snyderverse, beginning of the James gunn verse And anything that comes after it is is going to be, you know, part of his gods and monster story going forward, except you've got blue beetle and Aquaman two both slated after flashpoint, but aren't part of the James Gunn verse, but happen after the hard reset. So yeah, there's still a lot of scatterbrain stuff out there because I don't know that uh, Jason Momoa is still going to be Aquaman going forward. I don't know if this blue beetle movie counts, even though he said they both fold into what's happening. I don't know how I don't have answers. I wish I did. Um, but he doesn't really explain it other than to say that it all folds together somehow. Uh, next, we've got Superman Legacy. It's going to be the first movie he puts out. And it's going to be a bringing Superman to the world kind of story. So super, And that's the one where he says officially kicks off uh, the Gods and Monsters story that they're doing. And then we've got Lanterns. Uh, he described this. I'm actually pretty excited for it as a live action show. Um or it is a live action show. It's going to be starring Hal jo- or featuring Hal Jordan and John Stewart. And he described it as true detective, but with green lanterns, which I think is a really good idea. Uh, then the, this threw me. The next movie they have is the authority. <laughs> good Lord. So, uh, yeah, the authority are coming to the coming to theaters, which is really, really exciting news. But it's going to be really weird to see them interact with the Justice League. Uh, I know that they already have, but I don't, in my opinion, and this is just kind of a separate little tangent, I know that the authority exists in the DCU right now, but since leaving Wildstorm, they have not gotten the authority right. They are not the characters that we knew and loved from Wildstorm, Uh, but he says he is a fan of the Wildstorm characters. I really hope we see the true, true blue authority show up in these in these movies, I don't want the DC Universe versions with the Martian Manhunter on them and they work for Waller. No, I want the original authority. Have them come from another universe and everything. Just give us straight Midnighter, Apollo, Engineer, Jenny Sparks, all those characters. 
<clears throat> then we have Paradise Lost, which he describes as um, it's so it's like a prequel Wonder Woman. It's the mascara back in in the old times. Uh, so you, he kind of uh, likened it to like a Game of Thrones style show. So I imagine you're going to have Themyscira, probably kingdoms of, of humans, the Romans, the Greeks or whatever, uh, probably Atlanteans and just a lot of like high fantasy kind of stuff. So interesting. Um, Brave and the Bold is going to be the intro to Batman. And he said that this movie is going to be based on Jane or Grant Morrison's Son of Batman storyline. So Damian Wayne will be the Robin for this universe. And that's where we're going to get our first look at Batman. After that, we've got Booster Gold is going to be a live action HBO Max series. And uh, I know he's a fan of Booster Gold. So it's not a surprise. This was another surprise to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow is going to be our intro for Supergirl. And so for those of you who don't know, a uh, quick recap of Woman of Tomorrow was written by Tom King. And the premise of it was Supergirl, instead of coming to Earth like with Kal-El, like the comic origin, she ends up living on this like chunk of Krypton that survived the destruction of Krypton. It's got atmosphere and everything else, but it's a savage, horrible, brutal place. And that's where she grew up. As a result, she is just a very different character, and that's going to be our Supergirl for this world. Um, that'll be really interesting to see on screen, I think. And then it rounds out with Swamp Thing, which you describe as going to be a dark horror movie, but it will still be in the confines of the Gods and Monsters storyline, uh, which, again, is really going to be interesting to see that dark take on Swamp Thing on screen. I imagine uh, because you know we've seen it with Joker, and obviously it's worked with Deadpool, that putting an R rating on some of these movies would be a, is, is an option that's available. And I would really expect that for Swamp Thing. And I would really like to see it for the authority. They need, they, if you want to do them right, they should be a rated R franchise. The authority are brutal. Um, but yeah, that's what we've got moving forward. So what do you all think of this slate of DC? Is this, um, you know, is this exciting? Does this give you, do you for all is forgiven for, for casting out Henry Cavill and, and Gal Gadot and everybody in, in favor of what he's got coming forward. I do have to say, I am noticing that we've got the 10 year plan of the G of the DC universe and no wonder woman, unless she's appearing in paradise lost. But the way he describes it is it's in the early days of Themyscira. So I don't know if we've got Diana yet. It might just be Hippolyta and the Amazons. Uh, no wonder woman uh, is part of the trilogy and Batman comes in at, literally at the halfway point. Uh, actually a little past halfway. You have the authority before you have really any of the justice league, except for Superman. And I, I guess the green lantern, which interesting, interesting way to, to map this out. Now, obviously, this is a 10 year plan. It's subject to change. Um, you know, I highly doubt that very many studios, 10 year blueprints looking back when, it, when it's all said and done actually stuck to the original plan. There's probably going to, I would imagine there'd be a little bit of shuffling, maybe some projects get dropped some projects get added. Uh, but more or less, this is the blueprint that we're going to be going with. Um, I want to know what you guys think, which, which of his projects are you most excited about? I mean, obviously I want to see a well done Superman movie. I think James Gunn will probably hit a home run with that one. I mean, it's right up his alley. It's it's bright colors. It's overpowered. It's over the top. It's crazy. That's what Superman is, and that's where he lives. He'll do a great job with it. Creature Commandos, I think, are fun. And my two dark horse that I think I'm really going to enjoy are going to be the Lanterns and Authority because he talks about the Authority like he, he knows them and has a passion for the original versions of the characters, and that's what I want to see. Uh, but tell me in the comments below what you guys think and what you're excited for or not excited for. Uh, do you think it's good? Any Some good, some bad, kind of a mixed bag, or just all terrible? Toss all this out. Uh, talk about in the comments below where you're down there to do all the usual stuff. Hit like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I would love to have you here. And that's going to do it for this video. I will talk to you on the next one. See you then. Bye.